ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be reviewing Isle of Dogs, which has been requested by one of my loyal subscribers for a very long time. And I've been meaning to watch the movie anyways, regardless of the request. And I finally got around watching it yesterday, and now I'm here to kind of share my thoughts about the movie. So, first, I'm gonna just break down kind of the plot and synopsis without spoilers, and then I will kind of break down my review. So, what exactly Isle of Dogs is about? Out. Well, it is a story that takes place in Japan in a fictional city called Megasaki, and there is this canine influenza that is affecting dogs, which leads into the government basically shipping the dogs into this island, and it is kind of like becoming the Chernobyl of some kind where dogs are basically dying and starving to death. And then there is this main character who is a relative to the prime minister or this、uh, Japanese official who pushes the law called Atari. And his dog also got shipped into the island, and then he goes basically to rescue that dog. Also, in the very prologue of the movie, there is this you know, ancient story that happened thousand years ago where dogs roam the land free in peace. And then there was a dog hating dynasty known as the Kobayashi, which launched an attack to the dogs. There was this, like a war between cats and dogs, basically. And the cats eventually like, lost, and now they're like, plotting a revenge of sorts. And then they have like, a human who is kind of like, behind this whole、uh, epidemic type of a thing. And there's kind of suggestions that there's a conspiracy to get rid of the dogs、uh, from the country. And that is kind of like the very main plot premise of the story, the best way I can put it. And I actually watched around some of other people's reviews, which I don't do because I try to do my own reviews on my style, which might be a bit rambling, a bit more inconsistent, a bit more freestyle. That's just the way that is natural to me. I mean, in general, like the way that movies should be or the way that the reviews should be. These are just social constructs that this, people saying this is how things should are, but these are just status quo things and we should question them. And I just have the, my way of doing it. And if people don't like it, then they don't like it. They don't have to watch the videos. Nobody's forcing you with a gunpoint. But、um, so sometimes it's good to go to watch like, what other people are basically saying. And overwhelmingly, people were giving like 9 out of 10, 4 out of 5, very, very high ratings for the film. So the first thing that I'm going to be saying that is definitely not that highly rated film. And I think a lot of it has to do with this thing which I called. Director fagging, which is there is a very, very good director that may have done 10 out of 10 m o v i e at some point in their life, and then people go into this mindset because he did a 10 out of 10 m o v i e everything that he has done after that has to be really good. And this is a very fallacious, fallacious. Uh, type of a thinking in a lot of ways, and a lot of people do that. They do that in anime, they do that in cartoons, and they do it especially in the movies. So, everything by Quentin Tarantino is gold, and these k i n d of narratives are pushed by、uh, the taste keepers, the critiques, and all the mainstream basically. And Wes Anderson is one of those people who do very special films. I haven't seen Uh, a lot of his,、uh, well, actually, I haven't seen probably any of his films. I've seen part of、uh, The Royal Tenenbaums. But other than that, I'm really unfamiliar with his films for the most part. And, but he is like heralded as having a very unique style. And you can definitely see that in this movie. But when I review movies, they have to be separate from the other products. By that di- di- director, so unless they are like a sequel movie where it's relative to make a comparison, but I don't care what the director did, how many Oscars he has, it's irrelevant. The movie is either bad or it's good, and it's definitely an overrated movie. And when it comes to the story, as I kind of laid it down, it's a very straightforward story. Some people were talking about how it might be a bit difficult to follow because it doesn't have a main focal. Atari. Is the main character the main boy, but he's not being focused all the time. Then you have like the dogs, it's a, like a group of five dogs basically, or basically six major dogs. Chief,、uh, voiced by Brian Cranston, is technically the other lead. We could also make the case that Rex is also kind of like a big role in this、uh, movie. And the dogs are like the, the whole voice cast of. 
Uh, Bob Balaban, Edward Norton, Brian Cranston, Bill Murray, Jeff Coldblum, even Yoko Ono is in this film, uh, Greta Gerwig. It's a very, very big roster of very, very good voice actors. But the thing is, what I've heard is that they were not even filming or recording the voices in the same room. And you can feel that kind of in the dynamic that they were not so intense dialogues where you would feel that they would be like in, in together, so to speak. And I always said that it doesn't matter if you bring in the A-star celebs into an animated movie to voice things, that it's necessarily going to make it good. You have a lot of just very, very good voice actors, like in America, uh, Quentin Flynn is probably my favorite, and he's better than any other Hollywood actor in my point of view. Some are really, really good voice, uh, some people are really, really good on screen, but in voice acting roles, they might be very non-existent. And I see this very, very much actually in a lot of Disney and uh, Pixar animations, for example. And the thing is that I, I didn't really connect with the characters. Uh, I think this has a lot to do with the pacing of the show and it's kind of jumpy and it's a lot of side characters and it doesn't have very, very clear focus. Uh, I don't think this is a, like a coming of an age story or this, it is an adventure movie. But it's not, it's not Lion King. It's not Aladdin. It's not Hercules. It's not Tarzan. All those movies had a very, very good, like, a pacing. And you could, like, clearly separate the parts. And in this one, it's just, um, it's just, I don't know what to put it as. It's just kind of weird in a way. It's, like, demonstrated. Artistically, this movie is amazing, though. I love puppet animation. It's a very underrated form. And this is not necessarily even a kid's film, really. It's PG-13. I don't think there's anything really that raw about it. I mean, there's a bit of blood there and there. And it's mature themes. I mean, the dogs are, like, choking about, like, suicide and stuff like that. So it's not really a kid's film. Some people might have, like, that assumption. But it's really not. And because it's, like, you can, you can always tell that from the style of humor that they are doing. And there's... Well, is there even humor in the series is arguable. I mean, I have very high thresholds, what I consider as humor. But, I mean, you know, one-liner smart jokes, smart-ass jokes, not necessarily don't constitute as a comedy film by any stretch of imagination. But there's a couple of those. I didn't laugh at any point in the film, just so you know. But, I mean, it's, like, stylistically, as I said, the animation and the detail and the puppet stuff, like, it's very high notch. It's one of the best puppet animation films that I've seen. I mean, it just doesn't have... But it's not Dark Crystal. It's not Dark Crystal. There, there are many, 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 many good puppet animation films that just um, do things and stop animation films. And what I mean to say uh, is, is, like, doing things better in just more authentic way. And I, I think that Isle of Dogs just... Um, I, I don't know, like, how to put it. Just something was a big disconnect for me. I just didn't connect with the story. I think the premise was unique, but it, it wasn't... I mean, even the premise, like, it has a lot of political undertones, but it's not really a political movie. I mean, you can make the case it's about xenophobia. It's about kind of like, you know, not really racism, but it's kind of like a xenophobic story. And then, you know, like, people realizing that it was like... We, we shouldn't have, like, you know, sent the dogs there and then they find a cure and then they bring the dogs back and stuff like that. So it's, yeah. And then there's the other part with nobody, a lot of people talked about, which was that the Japanese part, so there would be people speaking Japanese, like the Atari and a lot of other Japanese characters. Everybody else speaks English. And a lot of people were saying that the dogs were raised in Japan, why they don't speak Japan. And I think that... The reason for that is to kind of like demonstrate that dogs, when they speak to humans in real life, we don't understand what they're saying. Like, I can have an understanding what they're trying to say, but we don't have like a exact understanding what the barks mean as a words, basically. So what that means is that we have, they have as a language cap and there is no subtitles when the Japanese people speak and you don't need them actually to understand what's going on. Obviously... I understand Japan, so I was, like, understanding 70% of the lines that they were saying and when they would talk about certain things. But even even when I understood everything, like, 
I, even if I didn't had uh, uh, even if I didn't have an understanding of Japanese, I would have still been able to understand those scenes. But this was very big problematic with a lot of uh, English speaking audience that were reviewing it. So I can see that because these people love their fucking dubs. It's just disgusting. <laughs> they, they, it's, it's just the Americans and British always like whine about this stuff. And but but I'm not gonna go into that. I've talked about it a million times in the past. But it was. Uh, okay movie it was an artistic experience but it wasn't this like uh story that had plot twists it really didn't have any uh, to be honest like it's very straightforward story and like like the trailer pretty much gives you the whole setting and everything like there's nothing nothing extraordinary happens in the film like it's it was kind of boring in that sense so i don't definitely think it's uh it's maybe a seven out of ten movie for me to be honest i mean I just, to me, it's, I don't watch movies because they look good. If I want to do that, I just go play games. I want to feel uh, a musical and story experience or fell in love with the characters. This movie does none of those three things. So it's not a movie for me. It's a movie for people who like the aesthetics, but don't necessarily care about the message or the very straightforward plot with no complexity whatsoever. So... Uh, it is not the movie for me, but I can understand why some people would like it, especially if they are big fans of Wes Anderson and like this director fagging uh, practice. But I mean, you know, this is my take on the film and that's how I feel about it. By all means, it's not a bad movie. I didn't feel bad about watching it. But uh, it could have been a bit better in the writing aspect of things. Animation-wise, it was really good because it even changed... The style a bit where they were like showing uh, from the cameras and like TV that was different art and also in the beginning they have these more 2D type of arts. So there are changes in the animation which kind of keeps it refreshing but I just couldn't really connect with li literally any of the characters or I didn't really care about the story either because it was so so straightforward what's going to happen like from the very minute. But thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time on the next review, whenever that may be. Until then, I see you later.